Welcome back to the Danny Harton Show. Today on this week's episode, I have YouTuber, actress, and singer, Zakaya Lamb. Hi, guys. <laughs> How are you doing, Zakaya? I'm doing pretty good. How are you? I'm good, I'm good. Okay, so you were, you were telling me that uh, singing was your first love before you started acting and stuff like that. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, just like take me through like your singing journey. So, um, it's actually kind of funny. When I was in elementary school, I was in like... A music class and we watched Annie and I remember like going home and like singing Annie to like my mom just like over and over and over again mm -hmm. and then she was like wow you're like actually kind of good at this and so like then I just continued to sing until like the third grade I auditioned for my first musical and I enjoyed it I got like little skunk role in Peter Pan and then the next musical I auditioned for was The Lion King and they were like oh my god you're so good and then I was in Nala I was Nala in The Lion King and then just kind of perspired from there like it grew it kind of the singing kind of like led to musical theater and then musical theater kind of led to acting and it's like just like finding my niche and all of that mm -hmm. and one of your videos you were talking about uh like falling out of love with singing do you think you're gonna like return to it or music i think slowly i am after that video i've been writing a lot of music and i've been like i just went through a burnout of kind of like everything for a while and so I've been writing more music, and I feel like slowly but surely I'm, like, finding that love again. So it's nice. Mm -hmm. Do you have, like, a music Do you have like a music plan? Are you going to make an album in the future? Or? That's what I'm working towards. I'm okay. working towards making an album right now. And I'm kind of, I'm, I'm excited. Um, I was talking to one of my friends about this last night, and he was telling me about, like, his recorder and stuff. So I'm, like, slowly getting some things maybe planned out to record and stuff. But I still have a few more songs to write. Mm -hmm. um what kind of genre is it gonna be you see I'm, I'm horrible at identifying genres <laughs> i'm really bad at it i think it's like indie maybe okay it's like indie pop kind of okay that would be cool that would be cool um tell me about your acting that seems like what you're most focused on at the moment is that right kind of yeah okay yeah um so acting i just i got a agent when i was like 13 years old and I've been with her since, and it's just kind of like, I really I really don't know. I just kind of grew to love acting, especially over COVID. That's when it, like, really started to get, like, a stronger love for it. And I was just, like, watching a ton of movies and a ton of TV shows. I had nothing better to do. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. I've always really liked film acting, and I thought it was really interesting how, like, a film is made and just all the different little pieces that go into making a great film. And, yeah, I just, I don't know. I don't, I don't really know how I, like, started to really love film and acting over, like, everything else. It just kind of happened one day. Mm -hmm. What were, like, the movies, like, growing, like, yeah, like, when you were growing up and you were watching movies, what were, like, the ones that, like, stuck out to you? Or, you, or like, an, a person's, like, performance where you're, like, okay, I think that's, like, what I want to do. Definitely Annie. That was, f like, the first one that I was, like, really, like, wow, this is really cool. And then it was more of a play. Once I was older, I went the, to a local um, theater company, and they did Bonnie and Clyde, which is, like, one of the best musicals ever, I'm convinced. And I was, like, man, I, I really want to be, like, I want to do Broadway and stuff. So that was, like, my goal for a long time. And it's I still would love to be on Broadway. That would be awesome. And then it kind of formed I, I form hyper fixations on like actors specific actors and like their stories and stuff so like it started who I really don't remember the first one but like the most recent one was probably Timothy Chalamet and I went through like his entire like just stuff of films I like I watched every movie he was in and probably the most impactful movie for me and Matthew McConaughey too I had a spurt with him is like interstellar and beautiful boy those are like two most impactful movies to me that like just really inspire me i kind of forgot your question at this point but i forgot my question as well <laughs> <laughs> what did you like about interstellar oh interstellar is just brilliant christopher nolan the director is insane he did inception and like the dark knight and all that mm -hmm. and i think he's just very brilliant i think it was a really interesting concept to come up with like some guy getting stuck in space and like he pulled it off amazingly and it's so good mm -hmm. I, wa I watched that movie when it came out in theaters i don't know how okay. old i was probably like 11 or 12 that's nice i wish i would have seen it in theaters i don't know what i was thinking 
Yeah, I didn't get it because I was a child, but right. But I need to revisit it. It's so good. It's yeah. like so good. I remember at the time everyone was like, "This is the most realistic sci-fi movie of mm-hmm. all time." I agree. But I was like, I don't know. That's kind of a boring selling point, in my opinion. True. But the robots, those robots are crazy. The like cube ones. Mhm. That thing was crazy. That's the only thing I remember from the movie. Are you going to watch Oppenheimer? Yes, I am. Um, Barbie and that movie come out like the same day, so I'm going to be in the movie theater for like six hours watching both of those movies. Hmm. Which one are you more excited for? They're both a different feel, so I feel like I'm equally excited for both of them because Barbie seems more of like a comedy than anything else, and Oppenheimer seems like just brilliant man in the making, you know? Are, yeah. Are you going to do like a, uh, you should do like a ranking the summer movies Ooh, video. I could do that. That would be fun. I think I might do that. That's a good idea. Yeah. Free idea right there. Right. I go to the movies all the time. So mm-hmm. I've seen quite a few so far. Did you watch the Spider-Verse movie? I haven't. I haven't even seen the first movie yet. Oh, you haven't? No. Is it good? Yeah, it's good. I don't know. I would honestly just skip it and just watch it. Really? Watch the second, honestly. Do I need the first one? Yeah, probably, but the second is, or is like, it's right there. I know. You should just watch it. Or you could just wait, because they're going to have a third one. True, so yeah. You could just wait till the third one's, like, coming out, and then, like, watch the first two, and okay. then go watch the third in the theater. Honestly, yeah, that's what you should do. <laughs> okay, I'll yeah, do that. Yeah, you should do that. You'll It'll save your, like, uh, sanity, I would say. Right, yeah. Because the second one has a cliffhanger. Oh, ending. Lovely. Those are my favorites. I think they're pretty. I mean, it's a beautiful movie, though. Yeah. It's also really long. It's like two and a half hours. Really? Yeah. I think, speaking of long movies, I watched Elvis like nine times in the theater, and that movie's like three hours long, but that one is so good. It's like such talent. I don't know why I brought that up, but. What what do you like about that movie? Because I don't like that movie. (gasps) You don't like that movie? No. What? That's crazy. It's, it's, l- it's like the most ADHD yet boring movie I've ever seen in so my life. It's so good. Awesome. They cut Butler. the camera like every three seconds. Okay. I can't deal with that. Okay, but that's like mainly at the big. Okay, actually, no, that's kind of throughout the whole movie. <laughs> but, I mean, Austin Butler's performance is like insane. I've, I've never seen a better biopic like regarding the actor bo- embodying like somebody else. And I've always been an Elvis fan since I was little. So, like. When I first saw the trailer, I was like, he doesn't look that much like Elvis. But, you know, the more times I watched the movie, I was like, yeah, this kid's Elvis. Like, he's he's Elvis in disguise. I'm convinced. I just I thought it was just so brilliant. I think I love Baz Luhrmann. I think he's really talented and a very unique director. He he, him and Wes Anderson, they make like really unique films. You can like definitely tell like that's a Wes Anderson film, you know. Oh, yeah, I was going to clown on the Elvis movie. That movie's so boring. No, it's not. It's great. Yes, it I'm is. I'm convinced it's, it's like, one boring. of the best movies ever. I, I, that's like... Okay, not the best movie ever. It's not one of the best movies ever, but it's really good. I felt like I didn't learn anything. I felt like I was just watching a man, like, a man's life without, like, learning anything about it. And just Tom Hanks being okay. a weird a weird guy for, like, three hours. I get that. I didn't like I it. I can kind of understand that, but, like... I don't know. I feel you didn't you didn't learn anything about Elvis Presley when you watch that movie. No, well, not anything that I didn't know already. I suppose. True. Yeah, but I mean, what else can you really learn? Uh, I don't know that Baz Luhrmann can't make a movie. Okay. Okay. I suppose. Whatever you say. <laughs> whatever you say. What'd you think of the? Okay, so uh, what'd you think of the soundtrack? For the movie. Yeah. Did you like the Doja Cat song? I love the Doja Cat song. You okay. know what? Actually. Um, little name drop. <laughs> my, I did the Wiz a few years ago, and the lady who was, uh, she sang the Ah, I get it, that thing. She was my Wiz in the show, so like I knew her, and I was like, what? I thought that was just so cool when I saw her. Mm-hmm. She died though, which is sad. Oh, rest in peace. I know. I will say the Elvis movie. It does. It's definitely like it looks good. I will give it that. Like, it's a it's a good-looking movie, and, yeah. like, the colors pop and stuff. And, like, that's what I like It's poppy colors. Like. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I like. I like uh, poppy I, colors. <laughs> I'm just being honest. It's like uh, with Spider-Verse. They have yeah. a bunch of poppy colors. Um, 
Speaking of another chaotic movie, uh, Scott Pilgrim. Oh, it's great. It's so great. It's so good. It's so interesting. It's it's hilarious. I um, It was a little too much for me the first time I watched it. That was mm-hmm. the same thing with Elvis. Like, it was mm-hmm. like, I was like, okay, this is a little much. But then I watched it again. I was like, this is perfect. This is great. Mm-hmm. And Scott Pilgrim is just its own, like, it doesn't even have a category. Scott Pilgrim is Scott Pilgrim. Like, yeah, it's just the Scott Pilgrim category. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, people call it a comic book movie. True. People yeah. also call it a video game movie. Mm-hmm. People call it a slice of life. <laughs> people call it a romantic comedy movie. Yeah. Which might be the best description for it. What is that actor's name? Is it Michael Sarah? Yeah. I want to say he's hilarious. Like yeah. he's he's so versatile, which is great. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah. We all need a friend like Michael Sarah. I agree. Have you seen uh, Super Bad? That mm-hmm. movie. I don't think I have. Oh, okay. You need to watch it. it has uh, Michael Sarah and Jonah Hill in it. Oh, okay. It's that like a, good. It's like a teen comedy. Well, okay. It's like a rated R teen comedy. <laughs> like the whole plot is they're just trying to buy alcohol for a party. <laughs> wow, okay. That's, that's like <laughs> okay. the whole plot. That sounds interesting. But it like unfolds into this crazy like movie. Okay. Um, But yeah. Did you read the Scott Pilgrim comic books or anything? Yeah, I'm not much of a comic book reader. Okay, fair I enough. I haven't read any of them. Fair enough. They have poppy colors. <laughs> wow i assume you liked them yeah they were great <laughs> they like it. they they expand on the stuff obviously because okay so in the movie the whole plot takes place over like a couple weeks mm-hmm. but in the comic books it takes place over like a year i oh, think okay so like and there's like six volumes so it's like one for each ex-boyfriend so like the fourth one like her ex-girlfriend that takes place like during the summertime and there's okay. like more development where in the movie she's in it for like two scenes and like it's like during the winter time like the whole scott pilgrim movie is just during the winter time yeah, yeah. but in the comic books it like starts a winter of this year and ends winter of like the next year if that makes sense yeah it does yeah it sounds interesting yeah I might have to read it. you could yeah they're they're a quick read and i don't know they're fun they definitely uh like they expand more on on the story and the characters and all that. Uh, there are some differences, like uh, the Chris Pratt character, he's like pretty different. Really? Like in the comic books, yeah. Which one's Chris Pratt again? He's the second one. Okay, yeah, I gotcha. He's like the movie actor. Mm-hmm. Cause like in the movie, they're like filming a scene like during their fight or whatever. In the comic books, it's like, it is like daytime and he's like in a trailer and he's like, hey, do you guys want some carrots? He like literally, he like what? doesn't, he like doesn't want to fight fight Scott at all, but he knows that Scott has to fight him mm. for the story to progress. Yeah. So he's just like stalling the whole time. <laughs> That's great. It's really funny. Um, yeah. Let's see. Did you watch the Mario movie? I did. What did you think? It was cute. It wasn't mm-hmm. like revolutionary in my opinion. <laughs> it was. I mean, it was cute. I liked it though. I think it was as good as it could have been. Yeah. Like. My expectations weren't, ex- like, super high, but, like, mm-hmm. like it wasn't a movie that you would expect a lot from. It's Super mm-hmm. Mario, you know? Yeah, I thought it was going to be, like, awful. Yeah. But it, it like, surprised me. Mm-hmm. That, that like was how I was with The Flash, honestly. I, I walked into that movie thinking it was going to be really, really bad. And I, like, I, I actually enjoyed it. It wasn't that bad. Really? I haven't watched The Flash. Really? It's pretty good. What happens? Spoil the movie. Um. So, he... He basically figures out that he can practically time travel, and he does, and he time travels to go save his mom, and like, because she dies when he was a child, so he wants to save his mom, and then he time travels, and then he meets his younger self when he saves his mom, realizes that he's messed everything up, Mm -hmm. and he tries to like fix it, so then he, when he meets his um, younger self, it's the day that he got his powers, so then he has to take him there. And the lightning strikes him, you know, he gets his powers. But the lightning ended up striking both of them. So the original Flash Flash lost his powers, and the new Flash has his powers. So, like, the, their new Flash is trying to, like, navigate and stuff, and he's, like, crazy little 18-year-old. And the old Flash is trying to fix everything and go back to normal. So then they, like, meet up with Batman, and they, like, try to go save the world because this bad guy comes. And then he keeps... The young new Flash tries to save these two important characters 
and he can't do it, so he keeps, like, going back in time and redoing it and redoing it and redoing it. So then they meet another Flash who's, like, really old, and he's been doing it for, like, 60 years trying to save these people. And so then they ended up, like, killing that Flash. Both of the Flashes. Both of those Flashes end up dying, and, like, the original Flash goes back to normal, and he attempts to fix everything, but he, like, still tweaks one minor detail, and, like, things still don't end up how they would, how they should be, like, originally. So then it's left on a cliffhanger because, like, his Batman is a different Batman or something. It's a, it's a lot. Like, I don't know if any of that made sense. What? No, it didn't. Which, yeah. Bat- <laughs> which Batman is it? It's, is um, oh, I don't know the guy's name. It's, I think, the original Batman who, like, did the original voice or whatever. Like, that's supposed to be, like, I don't, I don't know which Batman that is. Is it, like, the eight, 80s one? Probably. Okay, next question. <laughs> Are all the Flashes played by Ezra Miller or is yeah. it different people? Yeah, it's, they're all played by Ezra Miller. Is it a really old Flash Ezra Miller? I don't know. Okay. So, like, how much Ezra Miller is there? Oh, it's, like, all Ezra Miller. It's, like, Ezra Miller times 100. That's a lot of Ezra Miller. Mm-hmm. Did you watch any of the, <laughs> did you watch any of the other DC movies, like, before this one? I don't think I Because I have. didn't. I don't think I have. No. Yeah. So do they they don't do they reset the universe at the end of this movie or no? Because that's what I've heard, like for the Flash movie. Elaborate. Like, what do you mean? Like well, I've heard that. Well, basically, like all these DC movies have not been doing well, mm-hmm. like critically or commercially. So this uh, Flash movie is supposed to be like their uh, way to restart the universe, so they can like scrap everything they've done. And like bringing in like a, a new team of people to work on the movies, so yeah. so like you know so I guess this whole like DC universe started with Man of Steel, mm-hmm. like Henry Cavill, so this is like their excuse to get rid of like the Man of Steel Henry Cavill like uh, universe if that makes sense. I think so. Yeah, I think I think I think so. Yeah. Okay. Well, cool. I guess we figured it out. <laughs> I guess so. Did you watch the Batman with with Robert Pattinson? Of course I did. That movie I loved was so that good. Movie. I couldn't see some of it. You know, it was like extremely dark, but I think it was really good. I really liked it. Mm-hmm. That movie is also like we were talking about cinematography with Elvis. Mm-hmm. That movie it's like the opposite of Elvis. There's yeah. no poppy colors. No, yeah. But it it looks good. It's just like black on top of black on top of black. Mm -hmm. But, like, you can see everything. It's great. basically. It's so good. It is good. It's so good. And I like the whole, like, city that they made, like, out of it. Like, that Gotham, that version of Gotham is cool. I like how, like, grounded it was. Um, But, yeah, are you excited for the next one? The next Batman? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I am. I love Robert Pattinson. I think he's brilliant. Can't wait to see him on screen again. There's this other movie he's going to be in. It's called Mickey 17. It's by the it's by the Korean director. He made Parasite. Oh, if okay. you know oh that yeah, movie. yeah, 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 yeah. I've seen that. I'm excited to see that. Yeah, I think that one's gonna I be. I seen good like too. the little three second like trailer they released a few months ago, and I was like, man, this is gonna be so good. And I like don't know anything of what's <laughs> gonna happen in the movie. Yeah, I don't, I don't. Well, I know he's supposed to be. Actually, I really don't know what happens, but I'm excited. I think it's like, is it a sky a sci fi movie? I think so. Let me look it up on Letterboxd. I love Letterboxd. All right, sweet. We can talk about Letterboxd. <laughs> I rate, like, every movie on there. Yeah, I yeah. we should read some Letterboxd reviews, actually. Ooh. That would be a fun segment. Mickey, 17. Okay, so he's a disposable, like, clone, I guess. Oh, okay. On a human expedition sent to colonize the ice world. And after one iteration dies, a new body is regenerated with most of its memories intact. That's like the plot of it. So that sounds interesting. Yeah. actually. that's gonna be great. I haven't seen Parasite yet, but I like heard it gets a bunch of good reviews and stuff. Mm-hmm. I haven't seen it either, but I really want to. I know, me the too. only Korean movies I've seen are Old Boy and Lady Vengeance. Do you know what those are? Mm-mm. Okay, they're extremely dark, messed up movies. Um, <laughs> interesting. Okay. Anyway, like Old Old Boy is like. There's like a twist. It's like extremely famous for its twist oh. at the end of the movie. That's like what it's known for, and it's like super, super dark and like crazy. Like the movie starts out dark, but it ends like everything is just ruined. 
If what that are makes your sense. opinions on everything, everywhere, all at once? I didn't see that. You didn't see it? No, I want to though. I just haven't seen it yet. I think it was. I think my expectation was much higher than like what I saw. It was good. Don't get me wrong, but like, it just wasn't what I was expecting. But oh. I, I really don't know what I was expecting. <laughs> so like, elaborate on that. Like I, I watched it after all of their Oscar winning, you know ceremony whatever mm -hmm. and I think I think the little guy definitely deserved his Oscar I can't think of his name but like I just don't think they deserved as many Oscars as they got it was a crazy amazing concept really cool I think they pulled it off great very interesting but I just I don't think it was like what everyone made it out to be Okay, so I should lower my expectations. Possibly, yeah. Lower them a little bit, so it. then you can be surprised when you watch it. Okay. Are th is there poppy colors in it? Yeah, there's poppy <laughs> colors. <laughs> there's a bunch of poppy shit in there. Okay, that's good. Did you watch any other Oscar movies? Because I, I have not seen, like, a single Oscar movie. Oh, my God, The Whale. Yeah, I haven't seen it. Is insane. Brendan Fraser is insane. Sadie Sink is great. But it was mainly the Brendan Fraser show, and he was phenomenal. Like, I, I, I was so bummed because I was torn when I was voting on, like, the little Oscar website or whatever. I was torn between Elvis and The Whale because they were both so good, like, acting-wise for mm -hmm. Austin Butler and Brendan Fraser. And, of course, Brendan Fraser won most of them except for, like, one award, and I was glad that El um, Austin Butler finally won one. But, like, they were just both so good. I love The Whale. It was great. What did Austin Butler win? He won... Um, because Brendan Fraser won actor, right? Yeah, like actor of the year. He he won best actor in a, but I don't remember which award it was. It was an Oscar. I know that. Let's look it up. Maybe it was like the SAG award. What's a no, SAG award? Actually, I don't think it was a SAG. Uh, it's like the SAG After Union, which is for actors. They like do awards every year. So they do the actors vote on that. I'm pretty sure, yeah. I'm pretty sure the actors went on that one. The Oscar one is, like, based off of money and who can pay, <laughs> basically. It's the Academy, right? Yeah. What did Austin Butler win? Butler won the award for Best Actor in a Leading Role. Mm -hmm. Well, then what did Brendan Fraser win? They both won. Brent, there was a few different like award ceremonies. I don't remember which ceremony that was. Like it's not he didn't win the Oscar, but Oh, at the BAFTAs. Yeah, that's what it was. He won the BAFTA award. And what is a what's the BAFTAs? Um That's a great question. Actually I think that one's the one based off of actors vote. Mm, okay. BAFTA. Um It's an acronym of course, but I can't tell you what yeah. it is. But Yeah. What's your opinion on the Academy? <laughs> the Oscar Academy? Yeah. They're an interesting group of people, in my opinion. Um, I don't really know much about it, everything, but, like, I think it's just, it's interesting and greedy. Do you want to be part of the Academy? Oh, of course. <laughs> 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 I mean, who wouldn't want to be? Do you think that makes you a hypocrite, or do you want to change it from the inside? Both. Okay. I think I think both. I would love to change it from the inside, but that also does make me a hypocrite. Mhm. Mm yeah. Let's uh let's talk about Letterbox cuz I think Letterbox is an app sent from God. I agree. To bless us. Letterbox is like my best friend. I like letter I like the watch list because it's just nice to have a visual. Mhm. Mm like when I want to watch something, I just go there and I'm like, "All right, let's see what I want to watch." Mhm. Mm I haven't been watching too many movies too many movies so but i've been like learning like discovering some mm -hmm. so my list is just like growing that's good my without like anything being watched <laughs> every time i go to the movie theater and i like i love to go during the um the trailers and stuff mm -hmm. so like i'll sit there and i'll add them to my watch list mm. how many movies is on your watch list mm, does it say yeah it does if you go to, like, your profile and you look at, like, all the different things, it says, like, watch this. Oh, I see it. How many? I have 115. 115? I have 297. Holy crap. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. Yeah, I have way too many. The whale's on here, though. The whale is great. It's so good. The wrestler is also on here. The wrestler was made by the same guy, or the same director. 
And it's like basically the same movie, but it's about an uh, ex wrestler instead. Mm-hmm. It has Mickey Rourke, he that plays the wrestler. Oh, nice. That's yeah. cool. What's on your watch list? My watch list? I have a bunch of crap. Let's see. For as many movies as I watch, I don't watch like the really popular ones. Like, I haven't seen Kill Bill. I haven't oh, seen Kill like, Bill's so good. Uh, Birdman. I heard that one's good. Let's see. If you like Scott Pilgrim, you'll like Kill Bill. Okay. I think uh, I've seen, like, a few clips of Kill Bill, and it looks really good. I just, like, haven't found the chance to watch it. Mm-hmm. There's two parts, though. Oh, there is? Yeah, okay. to it. Uh, do you, are you familiar with the director, like, Quentin Tarantino? Yes, yeah. yeah. So, have you seen any of his movies? I haven't. Okay. I don't think. Okay. Um, I was just unaware. Yeah, okay, then maybe what I'm about to say won't make sense, like, make a whole lot of sense, but basically, like, the first Kill Bill, it's more, like, stylistic mm-hmm. and, like, fun. Like, if you, like... Oh, s- I have seen one of his movies, sorry. I've seen the Hollywood Man one with Leonardo Oh, DiCaprio. that one? That's one of my favorite of all time. It's so good. Um, we'll talk about that after. But, um, yeah, so Kill Bill Volume 1, it's, like, more, like, uh, stylized and, like, pulpy and, like, fun, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. And then the second is more, like, dramatic. And it's more of, like, a traditional Tarantino movie. Okay. If that makes sense. Yeah. When, when you watch more of his movies, you'll, like, understand. I've seen like some understand. of Pulp Fiction, too. So yeah. Like, I, I know a little bit of his style, but not, like... Yeah. So, like, Kill Bill Volume 2 is definitely more of that. Kill Bill Volume 1 sets everything up. And it, like... It sets everything up, but it's, like, way more, like, violent, like the like the violence is just like super campy it doesn't actually feel like people are dying if that makes sense Mm -hmm. but then like the second one is like the tone the tone is like kind of darker and it's like more yeah it's like more serious and it's like it gives you more of the actual story of the movie or of the of the like yeah of like the series i guess yeah and like the deaths like in that movie actually feel like there's weight to them Really? And stuff like that, okay. yeah. So a lot of people, like, just watch the two of them back to back. <laughs> I would say don't do that. Okay. I would say watch volume one. Give it, like, a couple of days or a week or whatever. You know, just, like, let it, like, process a little bit. And then watch the second one. Okay. You know, just, like, give give you, like, some breathing room. Because yeah. if you go from, like, this, like, super fun, like, pulpy thing to, like, this movie. <laughs> right. Yeah, 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 where yeah. Where it's, like, super, like, uh, like dark and stuff. Like, I think it's just too much of, like, a um, tone shift. Okay. But, um, yeah, what did you think of, like, Pulp Fiction and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood? I haven't seen a lot of Pulp Fiction. I've seen, like, maybe okay. 15, 20 minutes of it, but. I like it so far. I haven't mm. finished it, so like I don't really have much comment on it. But Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is great. I loved that movie. Anything Leonardo DiCaprio's in, I'm like all for. That was actually my first hyperfixation was Leonardo DiCaprio. Mm-hmm. He's insane, but he's mm. a little odd right now. <laughs> Why? Just the the woman he dates. He's dating like a 19 year old born in like 2006. What? Five, two thousand four, maybe. That's like a year younger than me. That's like the year I was born, almost, or like a year older than me. Like that's absurd. That's kind of odd. Yeah. There's, you know, the Red Hot Chili Peppers. <laughs> yeah. They're like, it, it, this was an. It came out like a while ago, but it was in twenty sixteen called The Getaway. That was their album, mm-hmm. and he like wrote it about basically he was dating like a eighteen year old girl. When he was 50 <laughs> and they crap. had a child yeah what? they had a child and then he wrote this whole album that's absurd he wrote this whole yeah but i don't i mean if you listen to the album he does not sound like he's happy about his actions <laughs> that's crazy i don't get like why celebrities do that like i know john mayer and taylor swift dated and she was like 18 19 and he was like 30 like that's just so interesting that's crazy i know that uh billy eilish is dating that guy from yeah uh that one band mm-hmm. yeah i never talk about it. I, don't, I don't know his band either though i don't know his name either but anyways let's get back to quinn tarantino yes yes <laughs> so did you watch the beginning of pulp fiction um i think i've seen like the middle 15 minutes i don't think i've seen the beginning okay so like what part is it like do you know what scene it was no i don't remember okay fair enough it's been so long i haven't i haven't seen it in a while. Let, let me know when you like watch the whole movie okay i will because it's really good i think it's uh, I don't want to say overrated. I th- I think it's an uh, I think it's an amazing movie, but there's a lot of his other movies that I like over it. 
if okay. that makes sense. Yeah. Um, but Pulp Fiction is really good. Are you an Avatar fan? Avatar? Yeah, like the, the movies, not the anime. Uh, I mean, I like it, but it's not like my favorite thing. Do you think it's, it's like just cool. overrated or anything? No. Okay, good. I don't think it's overrated because it's definitely like a technical achievement. Yeah, I think it's insane. You know, like I think there's stuff that I think it's a good movie. It's just not like my favorite thing in yeah. the world. Yeah, no, I agree. But I can still like appreciate it. So I'm not, I'm not going to like talk shit on Avatar just because it's not my favorite thing. Like mm-hmm. there's no productivity in that. So I Right, def- exactly. I definitely like I think they're both movies are good. I'm looking forward to the third one. Me but too. I can't wait. The Avatar franchise is not something <laughs> I'm, like, <laughs> passionate yeah. about at all, if that makes sense. I don't think the third one will take as long because it, he was waiting just until the technology advanced enough to use water Yeah. with, like, cameras and stuff, and it'd be okay. So, like, I don't think the next one will take as long, but it's still going to be a little minute before we get our Avatar loveliness back. It's still going to get delayed. Yeah. It's probably not going to get delayed like 13 years or whatever. Mm-hmm. But it's yeah. only going to get de- <laughs> delayed more than once. Yeah. For sure. For sure. But I'm looking forward to it. Is he just going to do is he just going to do different like environments is that for like Honestly, I have I have no clue. I think there's supposed to be like 7 movies. What? And like I don't know how much further he can go with like these blue people fighting each other, you know? There's, like, a meme. They're, like, oh, yeah, Avatar 3, the Lava Navi or yeah, something like yeah. that. Yeah, Like, he's gone through, yeah, the elements. It's just funny. So the two avatars are going to, like, come together, basically. Yeah, basically, yeah. <laughs> Did you ever watch Avatar in, like, the TV show? Mm-hmm. Okay. Next question. What'd you <laughs> 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 All right. What did you think about Once Upon a Time in Hollywood? It's great. It's brilliant. It's really good. I think it's funny. It also it reminds me of Babylon. Okay, I, I have not watched Babylon one. yet. It also has Margot Robbie in it. Yeah. And they kind of have, like, the same feel. Like, the same, like, Hollywood, druggy kind of, like, feel. I think hmm. it's good. Babylon, of course, is, like, straight drugs. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood isn't, like... They take drugs druggy, in the movie, but... Yeah, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's not, like, It's not about druggy. drugs. Yeah. But they take drugs in the movie, for sure. It's just got that same, like, vibe of, like... Like, the old Hollywood vibe. Yeah. And Babylon is, like, them making a movie. So it's, like in and out of like making a movie mm-hmm. and then once upon a holiday time or <laughs> i'm just gonna call it hollywood i guess at, at this point because it's a mouthful yeah but the hollywood movie it's like oh he's trying to make a movie mm-hmm. he can't get work mm-hmm. but he eventually does um and it's great i love you know oh what? god every scene is so good it is it's like i wish them i wish there was like a five hour cut of this movie me too because like that ev- would be great Cause like every couple months, I just put the movie on and I just sit there and I just like watch it and like fully engage with like the world of it. Cause like every scene is amazing. I'm not a huge. I don't, I don't really like movies that are like extremely dialogue heavy. I suppose. Mm-hmm. Okay. But this is like all the dialogue is good. They yeah. talk like real people. Mm-hmm. You know. <laughs> yeah. Um, they talk like real people in real situations. Um. Every scene is great. The way it's shot is great. There's so many great moments, like Brad Pitt beating the shit out of that one guy. Yeah. No, and then makes him change his tire. <laughs> that's one of, like, oh. the main things that I remember about the movie. Yeah. It's, like, every time I think about the movie, I think of that. It's so good. That's such a good scene. And then, like, um, uh, when Le- Leonardo DiCaprio is losing his mind, mm-hmm. like, in the trailer. Yeah. That one's good. The Bruce Lee fight. That one's good. That was great. I said, like, uh, when he's when Leonardo DiCaprio is actually, like, on set, like, the movie within the movie, Mm -hmm. where he's, like, playing that cowboy guy. That was also great. And I love, like, (laughs) I love how, like, uh, he, like, messes up in the movie. Oh, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Like, he messes up. It's, like, meta. He messes up in the movie, but he was supposed to in the, Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm trying yeah, to say. Yeah, yeah, no, I got it's you. crazy. I got you. Yeah. It's crazy it acting. Is. Yeah. It's like layers to the acting. Leonardo is brilliant. I'm convinced. Mm-hmm. I, I have you seen um, What's Eating Gilbert Grape with no. Johnny Depp and oh God, it's so good. I, I don't understand how he didn't I'll win an Oscar it. for that. I'll add it to the watch list. <laughs> He's so good in that. That was that was one of his first like bigger roles. I want to say. Because, of course, he was on the TV show, like, In My Room or whatever it's called. 
and was he'd he done like Marvin's Room and a few other things. But I think that was like the biggest thing he had done like, with like a big name actor. And then he goes on to do like Titanic and all of that. Wasn't he like a child actor? Mm-hmm. Was he like a Disney Channel kid? I don't think he was like a Disney Channel kid necessarily. Maybe <laughs> he was. I don't know what the TV show he was on was called. I don't really know like what it's about. I've never. He seen might be it. too old to be a Disney Channel kid. Yeah, I think so. But okay. Though he does date Disney watch. Channel kids, which is interesting. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you have some explaining to do, Mr. DiCaprio. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, yeah, did you watch the any of the deleted scenes for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood? I haven't. Probably not, but there's some good ones. So, do you know, like, the whole Charles Manson thing mm-hmm. about it? Yeah. There's, like, a scene where Charles Manson is, like, trying to, um, I don't know, like, some real-world life guy that he, like, knew. But it was, like, in the house that Leonardo DiCaprio lives in in the movie. Mm-hmm. And he, like, goes to, like, the neighborhood. And he's, like, hey, does this guy still live here? And he's, like, no, that's Rick Dalton's house. And there's, like, all this stuff. And, like, talk about Charles Manson's, like, mu- music career. Because he was like a folk singer yeah. before he uh, did the other stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it it's great. It's great. What are your um, what are your your top four on Letterbox? Like on your favorites? Yeah. I wish they did like top five, top four. I like the top down. four. I like the top four. Um, I have Beautiful Boy, La La Land, Elvis, and Interstellar. Okay, which one's Beautiful Boy? <laughs> Beautiful Boy has Timothy Chalamet and Steve Carell in it. I think I said his name right. And it's insane. It's based off of a true story about a guy named Nick Sheff, who was a drug addict. And it's kind of more based around David Sheff, which is his dad, who is trying to help his son, like, go to rehab and stop doing drugs, basically. But I just think Timothy Chalamet's performance in that was brilliant. Like, actually insane. And he was maybe 21, 20 or 21. Mm. And I'm just like, wow. Oh. insane and steve carell it was a yeah. it's a dramatic movie and like i've only ever seen him play comedy and like that was just outstanding it's so good i wrote a comedy rap first about steve carell really yeah do you want to read it of course okay here you go that is so funny that's great but yeah i'll tell you more about that after okay. um because it's like confidential information right right, right. Uh, okay yeah so steve carell's in that movie that's crazy mm-hmm. yeah very crazy uh <coughs> what's like your other three la la land which okay, is brilliant have you movie. seen that one yeah okay it's so good i love la la land <coughs> yeah la la land and have you seen whiplash um i haven't seen no i haven't but i've seen like the okay. one scene where uh, who is that actor i can't uh, think of his name but the bald uh, guy is like yelling at the kid on oh the yeah. drum stick the drums and he's like telling him no JK. you're like off and like i've seen that scene and i'm like that's brilliant. Yeah. I want to watch this movie. J.K. Simmons, I think that's his name. I think so, yeah. Yeah, <coughs> that movie's amazing. That was on my top four for a while. Really? Yeah. Um, I need to watch it. It's on YouTube for free right now. What? Okay, I'm watching it tonight. Right, yeah. <laughs> usually, um, The Perks of Being a Wallflower is usually on like my top four. Have you seen that one? No, I know what it's about. Oh, it's it, so good. I think. Isn't it just like... Is it, it's just a high school movie, and the kid is like, mm, I'm going to try LSD, and that's like the whole movie, right? No, 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 no. Okay. Kind of. It's about a high schooler. It's about a freshman. Um, it's got Logan Lerman and Emma Sw- Emma Watson and Ezra Miller in it. This was like one of Ezra's early things. But it, the author of the book actually was the director, which is why the movie is so brilliant and so perfect. Oh, okay, so it's like true to their vision, yeah. basically. Mm-hmm. And it's about um, Logan Lerman, who's like this really awkward kid. His friend killed himself like when the year before or whatever and he's trying to make friends and it's his freshman year and he befriends these two seniors which is emma watson and ezra and it goes through like his entire freshman year and like how he just like navigates through high school and he's got like severe depression you know like perks of being a wallflower he just feels like a wallflower if that like makes any sense it's so good it's like one of the best movies ever so is it like a fly on the wall perspective to like what's going on around him kind of yeah yeah and like the shots are so beautiful have you seen the one um shot where like emma watson is like standing up in a truck and she's like going through a tunnel you've never seen that no i don't think so what that's insane well that's like the most um like well-known part about the movie i would guess okay. i would say I'll, I'll look it up on youtube it's so later good. i guess and it's also got paul rudd in it he's the teacher is that ant-man yeah okay yeah. i only know him for ant-man 
I know he did a bunch of stuff before Ant Man though. Yeah, no, I only know him for Ant Man and then like Perks of Being a Wallflower, which are like the only two things I've really seen of his. Did you see the new Ant Man? Sucked. You saved <laughs> yourself. That's what I've heard. I saw like the face guy, like the big head man. Oh god, I just forgot about that. Don't remind me of that. That's I've horrid. seen that screenshot and I'm like, wow, this is funny. This is in like a this is like in a big budget. Yeah. This is like part of like one of the large like biggest movie franchises of all time actually has this guy in it. Oh, that's I I forgot about that guy. He's he's interesting. So stupid. I hated that. <laughs> that was like my least favorite thing. It's so weird movie. looking. I don't get it. Did you see the new Guardians of the Galaxy? No, I want to though. It's good. I liked it. Yeah. I cried like the every time there was like a flashback. That's my friend Tyler's just like favorite movie of the summer so far. Really? Is what he told me. It's pretty good. Yeah. I did like it. I uh, yeah, I want yeah, I want to watch it. I just haven't gone around to it. Yeah, but now we're on Barbie and Oppenheimer like oh, season, wait. so I'm I don't so know what I'm going to do this. with movies. I guess I'm slightly behind. <laughs> Although I will not be watching either of those movies on opening uh, night because I'm watching Eraserhead at midnight at the Belcourt Theater. Mm, okay. Yeah. I have no clue what that is. Okay, good. <laughs> it's supposed to be a weird movie. Do you know who David Lynch is? No. Okay, he's like one of the worst directors I've ever watched in my life. Oh, okay. Um, but but he's my friend's favorite director and this is like <laughs> this is supposed to be like his first movie. It's oh. like from the seventies and it's like black and white. Oh, okay. And it's supposed to be like a moody uh like movie about fatherhood, but it has like all these weird like weird imagery and allegories and stuff. Okay. So I've watched three other David Lynch movies which are all hated. This is like the fun this is like <laughs> my last chance I'm giving him. Yeah, it's like his redemption round. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it was on my watch list anyway mm -hmm. before I even, like, try before I even attempted to get into, like, David Lynch's, like, yeah. world. So I was like, okay, I have to, like, watch this movie. I have to give it a fair chance. I'm probably not going to watch another one of his movies, even if I like this one. But I watched a movie called Lost Highway, which is garbage. I watched a movie called Mulholland Drive, which is just a better version of Lost Highway, mm -hmm. but it's still garbage. But I'll probably come back to watching it at some point. And then the actual, no hyperbole, worst movie I've ever seen in my life, Inland Empire, Inland Empire okay. which is like a three-hour lawn I feel like I've heard of those. Movie. It has Laura Dern in it. I think that's her name. I don't know who that is. It has Ter Terry Crews plays a homeless man at the end. Really? Yeah. But that's not, funny. Not even Terry Crews could save this one. <laughs> That's sad. It's such a weird, That's horrible so movie. It took me like two weeks to get through it because it's like free on YouTube. Oh, nice. That's nice. And I was like, I was like, I watched like sometimes, like I actually, the first time I picked it up, I got through like 40 minutes, which is pretty good. But then, <laughs> <laughs> but then like a bunch of times after it was like 10 minutes here, 30 minutes here, like five minutes here because, oh my God, this movie sucks. But That's I forced hilarious. myself to get through it because I wanted to relate to my friend big mistake but at least i now have a definitive movie that i can say is the worst i've ever seen true because i don't true. think i had one before beforehand um yeah what's the worst movie you've ever seen worst movie i've ever seen i don't know i don't think i've ever seen a movie that's just like so awful that i like remembered it very well i guess mm -hmm. recently a movie i didn't like was the new um Black Panther. I didn't like it. Oh, okay. Mm, I haven't really liked any of the Marvel movies that have come out lately. They're, they're eh. Um, a movie that I just didn't like. I don't know. There's no movie that I've, like, ever watched and was like, I just absolutely don't like this movie. I don't think. Let me look at my, like, lowest rated movie on here. What happens in Black Panther 2? Because, like, Chad, Chad is dead. Um, so, like, what happens? It goes like how do they continue? Basically, it? the little... So, uh, Chadwick Boseman was going to die anyway, based off of, like, the comic books, I think. Okay. But <laughs> I think he just died much sooner than they, like, obviously wanted. And so, it, yeah. the, his, his powers or whatever ended up going to, like, the little sister. And it's like, come on, we've seen this before. This is... And it just felt like it was a mockery of his death, in my opinion. Really? Although people think it was like, oh, it was so good to, like, Chadwick's death. And I'm like, was it, okay. though? Was it really... So is she like the queen now, or does she, or is she just Do a black panther? Do you want a spoiler? Panther? Yeah, I'm not going to watch I'm the movie. I'm pretty sure the queen, I if, if I'm remembering right, the like original lady, she dies at the end of the movie. So then, yeah, like the little sister becomes like the queen. So the she's household. like 
Okay. So she's not just like the Black Panther. She's also like the the queen of like the nation. I think so. Because that's yeah. like what uh, Chad <laughs> was, right? Yeah, yeah. If basically. I remember, I like the first Black Panther. Me too. The first one was great. I loved it. They I think Chadwick is, was a very brilliant actor too. Yeah. He's so good. There's another movie that he did where it's like a it's a period piece kind of, and he just he's just so versatile and he's so good. I love him. He's great. I need to watch more Chad movies. You should honestly. But I like the first Black Panther because they just did something different, mm-hmm. like in the superhero movie. Yeah. Like I don't know. Like I I like all the costumes and like imagery. I like how it they didn't feel like a basic like yeah Marvel movie. Yeah, they actually like put like love and like care exactly into yeah. that movie. You know, he was fighting. I think he had colon cancer the entire time. Really? Yeah. Okay, that's crazy. That's crazy. That's crazy. I know that's like, you know, what he died from. Yeah. I know he was battling it, like, behind the scenes, mm-hmm. but I didn't know, like, for how long. Or I think he battled it for a long time, and he didn't tell anyone. Yeah. Which is sad. Yeah. Rest in peace, right. Chadwick Boseman. Um, do you want to hear my <laughs> top four letterbox of movies? Of course I do. Okay. So, at number one, my favorite movie of all time, we have Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. I haven't seen that one. Okay. It's a, it's a drug movie. Oh, okay. It I has like Johnny movies. Depp in it. Johnny Depp. Why um, haven't I seen that? Do you know who Hunter S. Thompson was? I don't think so. Okay. So <laughs> Hunter S. Thompson was a super famous journalist. Mm-hmm. Um, like in the sixties, seventies, eighties, really just the sixties up to like the two thousands. Um and so he in nineteen seventy he was given Actually, let me back up a little bit. He, like, got famous off of, like, covering the Hells Angels motorcycle gang mm-hmm. in the 60s. He, like, actually lived with them oh. for a year. And there was, like, he, like, wrote a whole book about it because, like, the, uh, the Hells Angels were, like, the media were covering them. And they are like, oh, this is, like, the threat. This is, like, the big, like, threat of our day or whatever. Yeah. And he's, like, living with them, literally living with them and, like, riding with them. And so he's, like... He's, like, documenting what he sees, but he also, like, um, sort of argues against what other people, like, other, like, articles were saying. So he's, like, this is what this magazine put out, and here's, like, what actually happened, because I was there. So this is, like, the narrative they're trying to push, oh, wow, and yeah. this is, like, literally what happened. So he's not he's not there to paint them in a positive light in any means, mm-hmm. but he's there to, like, actually tell the, the facts. Basically. Yeah, the facts. And, like, the whole, their whole, um, or what the media was putting out is that they're, like, violent, dangerous thugs, Mm -hmm. you know. And then Hunter S. Thompson was, like, these are just guys, these are just people, lost men. They're just lost men that, like, want a community. And so this is their community. Maybe it's not the most healthy community out there. These are, like, you know, lost people that you shouldn't just, like, disregard. And, like, these are people that actually, like, need help and, you know. This motorcycle gain is, like, what gives them purpose, you know. So that's, like, kind of what he got famous for. And then Rolling Stone hired him to cover a uh, Mint 400 race, which is, like, a motorcycle race in Las Vegas. So he goes there, and, like, he writes a book called Fair and Lovely in Las Vegas. And he just, him and his attorney basically just do a bunch of drugs the whole time. Wow. Okay. So, so like he he's going here, literally hired by Rolling Stone magazine. Yeah. And to cover, or no, it was Sports Illustrated. My bad. He wrote for Rolling Stone. He put this story in Rolling Stone. But Sports Illustrated hired him to cover the motorcycle race, and he's like, all right, bet. And then he just uses credit to buy like a convertible. He uses credit to like get into all of these hotels. He uses credit to buy fucking drugs. You know what I'm saying? Wow, yeah. So, like, all, basically, like, uh, Sports Illustrated and Rolling Stone were paying for this entire trip without knowing about it. And he's yeah. just, like, finessing them. Holy and he's just, crap. like, doing all these drugs. And so when he put the story out in Rolling Stone, he put it under the name uh, Raul Duke because mm-hmm. he didn't yeah. want to, you know, have his real name attached to that. So, like, in Rolling Stone, it's, like, Fair and Loathing in Las Vegas by Raul Duke. And, like, and... 
Thompson's later work, he references Raul Duke as another person that he knows. Like, that's his friend. Yeah. But it's just him. That's, that's Which great. is that's so, hilarious. like, funny. So this man, like, actually, like, finessed, like, his way through life. Dang. He's probably the greatest finesser of all time. It sounds like it. <laughs> but it's my favorite book. It's extremely fun to read. It's, like, 200 pages. That's not bad. Um, and the movie's also my favorite movie. It has Johnny Depp plays Raul Duke. Um, and then Benicio del Toro plays his attorney, Dr. Gonzo. Mm-hmm. And then basically, those are like the main two actors, and everyone else it has like a cameo. Oh, okay. So, like, yeah. to- Toby Maguire is a hitchhiker. That's great. At the, like, great. the beginning of the movie, he's like this hitchhiker that they pick him up. And then, like, do you want drugs? Do you want some acid? And he's just like, <laughs> he's just like in the back, like, completely like scared out of his That's mind. That's hilarious. They got Christina Ritchie's in it. I'm looking at, like, the cast. Those are the only two people I know, but <laughs> <laughs> but they have a bunch of, like, I don't know. It's a bunch of, like, cameos. That's what I'm excited about in Barbie. There's going to be, like, a bunch of cameos. Really? I think it's going to be funny, yeah. Do you know who they're ca- cameoing? I think, I'm pretty sure Zendaya is a cameo in there. Hmm. That's, like, the only one I've, like, really paid attention to because I'm like, what? That's cool. Hmm. I'm excited to see that. There's another movie Zendaya is going to be in. It's got Mike Fiest and another guy in it, and then Zendaya, of course. And it's about, like, a tennis star and a love triangle. And I'm so excited to watch that because I love Mike Fiest and I love Zendaya. I got you. Um, so, yeah, my next movie, second favorite movie of all time, is The Big Lebowski. I don't think I've seen that one either. Okay, it's a movie about, it's just about a bum, essentially. Okay. What's his name? Jeff Bridges. He play he plays like this bum in Los Angeles and he gets like mixed up with crime oh, and okay. things of that nature. Uh John Goodman is his best friend. Mm-hmm. Uh and Steve Buscemi is like the third their like third wheel friend. Wow. And it's just so it's just like it's like one of the funniest movies I've ever seen in my life. And watch it's like it. It every like time you like watch it, you like pick up on something new. Mm-hmm. Whether it's like a plot point or it's like a joke okay you know yeah or like a visual gag like you'll pick up on something new and has such a great cast that's julianne moore is a major character uh philip seymour hoffman he's like the butler for like this rich guy that's uh part of the movie john turturro's in it uh flea from (laughs) flea from the red hot chili peppers he's like the bass player that's great he's he he's uh part of a game called the nihilists um which is hilarious but i won't go on about it it's it's a great movie it's a super super funny movie i'll have to watch it what is it called again the big lebowski okay it's a coen brothers movie i've heard of them yeah it's it's one of their movies it also has a great soundtrack it has like a folk rock soundtrack that's cool too. it's nice it's nice beautiful yeah. boy has an interesting soundtrack it's like it's got rock music in there and it's uh for such a like solemn, quiet-ish movie, mm-hmm. the soundtrack is very interesting. But that's what I really like about the movie. Yeah, I got you. Soundtracks can like make or break a movie. For in sure. Most cases. That's what Tarantino's really good at is uh, soundtracks. Mm-hmm. Like, just play playlisting his movies basically. Yeah. But he's like an actual like legitimate like music fan, so he doesn't. He's not like the Mario movie where it's like, all right, take on me time. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's like, here's this like song I grew up listening to, you know, and he like puts it in for a scene. And then my third is Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, which we already talked about. And then my fourth favorite is uh, a Japanese movie um, from 1952. Okay. Uh, it's by Akira Kurosawa, if you've heard of him. I've never heard of him. And he's like the greatest. Uh, Japanese director of all time, basically. Okay. <laughs> he he's has like a bunch of famous movies, but he did like a bunch of samurai movies. Mm-hmm. But this movie's called Ikaru, and it's um. Let me read the synopsis. Uh, Kanji Watanabe is a middle-aged man who has worked in the same monotonous bureaucratic position for decades. Learning he has cancer, he starts to look for the meaning of his life. So it's like this 50s, like, black and white Mm -hmm. Japanese movie. That sounds pretty good, actually. And it's like a whole, yeah, it's just about this this, uh, old man, and he has, like, his wife is, like, deceased, and he has, like, a son who, his son has a wife, and they're kind of, like, arguing a little bit, 
and he's worked in like public affairs i think for like 40 years Dang. and he's just been doing paperwork for like decades and he's like you know he gets cancer and he's like wow i've like wasted my life so then like he tries to like find meaning um to his life and like sort of do like a i'm not gonna swallow the movie but a, a major a major thing mm-hmm. a major thing in the movie is like a commentary on like welfare and public affairs public servants things things like that because the beginning of the movie there's like i think there's like a sinkhole in a playground oh, or something like okay. that so it's like dangerous yeah. children can get hurt and so a group of like mothers essentially like go to like i don't know the public service affairs building i don't know all the jargon for that so i'm just going to use a bunch of like nonsense words but anyway <laughs> so they go there and you know like they go to like one department and they're like oh that's uh that's actually uh like parks and recreation mm-hmm. so then they go to parks and recreation and they're like oh that's an engineering problem and they go to engineering and engineering is like oh that's uh this department problem and so they literally like the first 10 minutes they're just going to different departments and like all these like uh i guess government officials are just like making excuses and they're like oh this is that so they literally like go in a circle like they go in a circle like at the end and they like leave angrily and then after that scene they introduce the main character who Kanje Watanabe is the character's name. They <clears throat> they introduce him, and so basically, uh, there's a lot of other things that happen, but they basically address the initial <clears throat> like park like sinkhole issue at the end, and it's oh, sort of like good. a it's sort of like a commentary on like that whole like public <clears throat> public servant thing. Yeah. As well as, you know, you know, a lot of other things about, you know, just life in, in general. I mean, that movie, it'll break your heart, but it's one of the best movies I've really seen. Good. And Ikaru, that name is Japanese for to live. Oh, okay. That's like the title. and That's like the English title. Yeah. Essentially. But, I mean, it's a great movie. It's like two, three hours. It's not uh, if you I'm, want. Me, personally, I love movies that are longer. Yeah. I feel like you can get so much more from, like, a movie like that. Mm-hmm. And I watched that at the Bell Court, and they had like, they had like the film popping on screen and stuff. Oh, that's cool! It was yeah. great. It was great. Definitely, if you want, if you just I don't know, just watch that movie on one evening that you're prepared to get your heart broken. Definitely watch that movie. I think it's like an essential okay. that everyone should watch at some point. But yeah, those are my top four: Fear and Loathing, uh, The Big Lebowski, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and Ikaru. Those all sound good. Yeah. All. Obviously, I know. The third one is good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, all great movies. Um, yeah, so we've been going for, like, around an hour. Um, but uh, let me ask you, what's, like, your – what's, like, the goal of your YouTube channel since you've been doing that for, like, some time now? It's mainly just for fun, honestly. Like, mm-hmm. I don't – I don't ever see myself getting, like, paid for it, really. It's mm-hmm. just something I, like – enjoy and I, I it's it's just a, like another creative outlet for me because for a while I was feeling like I was just really trapped creatively and couldn't make anything like I wanted to so then I just like picked up my camera one day and I was like all right let's make a YouTube video and it just like helps me release creativity to make more space for new creativity <laughs> so I think really it's just a just for fun for me honestly there's no like direct goal or anything for my YouTube channel so do you have like a direction you want it to go in at least or are you like hey i have this idea i'm gonna make it kind yeah of thing. basically yeah i just like i have ideas for certain videos yeah. and i just i just will make them as they come for mm-hmm. a while i was doing really good with like being con- with uh being consistent and like posting every week but lately i haven't because like I said, it's just like a creative outlet for me, and I just had a lot of creativity to let out. So like that was good, and now I'm trying to like find more ideas and stuff so I can be consistent again. Yeah, I think that's good. I always think like you should just if you have an idea, like if if you have an idea for a topic or a video, and it's not out there like yet, or mm-hmm. you're n- not 
happy with uh i guess other people's videos on it i think you should just make it yeah is um is uh i don't know that's just something like i make i make music so that's how, like my main focus but i enjoy making youtube videos yeah exactly and, like and i like there's a, it can only really help you because like you know either you get more people like you know more eyes on you mm -hmm. or you just make like you just make something that like you're proud of yeah you know like i i don't know i just i just think you know more people should like be doing that and taking that risk i agree i feel like there's a lot of people i know they're like oh, how did you like start a youtube channel it's so like hard for me to get out of my shell and like start it i just mm -hmm. i don't understand that because like you're posting for literally a bunch of strangers if you don't like mm -hmm. promote it mm -hmm. so like nobody's really it's not a place where i've ever really felt judged when i post on youtube i'm like i just i don't care whatever i post on there i post on there it's like it's me what that what and why am i being judged for that so like i feel like if people want to start a youtube channel i think they totally should and they shouldn't let fear stop them from doing that because that's just stupid in my opinion yeah i agree and if like if there's something you want to make you should just make it like yeah. it doesn't have to be youtube exactly like, right. you should just like whatever it is if you want to make a song you should make a song even if it you sucks know? like nobody's yeah, first song is sucks. ever amazing right so, like, yeah i mean you should just do something that you want to you know um you have a sort of series on your channel called five minutes with sakaya what kind of like made you want to want to do do that uh, that series i wanted to start posting twice a week mm -hmm. and i was like trying to come up with an idea that wasn't super hard to edit and stuff because like i was spending a lot of time editing my saturday videos so i was like i just want something that's quick and easy and like interesting enough for me to make that i enjoy and i i wanted to start a podcast originally but mm -hmm. i just didn't have like the means to i guess to say and i wanted to start it with like one of my friends but she lives f out so like it's hard to do that with her so i was like okay i could start like a podcasty kind of thing with the five minutes with sakaya videos and i didn't want to like be sitting there talking for like 20 minutes you know i just wanted something that was short and easy to do and, like, that was just an easy, like, thing to accomplish. Just find a topic and talk about it for five minutes. I can talk somebody's ear off. I'm yeah. convinced. That makes sense. Do you think you'll do, like, if you have a, a topic you're, like, super passionate about, do you think you'd do that style of video but, like, make it longer? Like, not, oh, have, yeah. not have the timer on yeah. and just be like, okay, here's, like, a 50-minute video where I rant about whatever this is? Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah 100%. Okay. yeah i would definitely do that okay cool do you have any like other ideas for like series on the channel or anything like that i mean i don't want you to like put your big ideas out there so people don't steal them but no yeah you know is there anything you would like to share about it at this time mm. now i'm gonna post another video in like a week or so so like yay but okay. i don't really have any like ideas at the moment yeah. i just i just am Mainly, I think my content's probably going to switch to, like, vlogs and stuff and, like, the occasional ranking video or something like I was doing before. Because mm -hmm. before I was doing a lot of those kind of videos and less vlogs, but vlogs are much easier for me to make because I am much busier now. Yeah. So I'll probably switch to more vlog content. Yeah. Vlogs, vlogs do good and ranking videos do good as mm -hmm. well. People, <laughs> people love to see, like, people criticize yeah. <laughs> something. So yeah. ranking videos are are great. I have some ideas, uh, like tier list ideas in yeah. the future that I will not disclose at this time. Uh, what is your end goal in life? My end goal? Yeah. Oh, man, that got deep. Um, <laughs> I guess my end goal is to inspire people. That's like one of my, my big things. I just want to inspire people to do whatever they want to do. Don't feel held back by like money or family or anything just go be amazing word <laughs> um but like do you want what do you <clears throat> what do you want to be like your like job in the future job. like is it an actress or is it like a content creator or what do you like actually want to be um i want to do a little bit of everything as i said earlier i i don't have like a specific place where i want to stay 
I would love to be an actress for a while. I'd love to be in movies. I guess acting would probably be like my main thing. Mm -hmm. But I also want to do like behind the scenes. I like to do like directing. I like producing. I like writing. I want to write a book. I want to write an album. I want to make an album. I want to sing. I want to go on like a concert, you know, like a tour, not a concert. I have, there's like so many things I want to do and I want to be able to accomplish like all of it. I don't want to be able to feel stuck in a box. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. You want to be a generation defining artist? Basically. Like David Bowie? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's cool. I respect that. Uh, do you have any throwaway movie ideas you want to put out there? Not like your big ideas, but like some throwaway ones that you would not mind viewers of this uh, video stealing like in mm. the future? I don't know. Wait, no, like elaborate. I don't think I know what you're asking. Uh, just like, I don't know, like, oh, I've had this idea at some point, but I don't want to do it because I don't think it's like an amazing idea. Like, okay, okay, let me ask you this, like an idea that you'd like be content if it doesn't like actually happen. Does that make sense? I think so. You know, like a throwaway idea. There's a, there was one um, I wanted to create. I didn't know how to go about it, but basically like, I hope I'm answering this question correctly. Like a, um, uh, th th um, how do I put this? A movie that takes place solely in a room of a therapist's room. And it like just kind of follows the therapist mainly. You never really see like their patient, but it's just the therapists and like how they go about a day, basically like a day in the life of a therapist and how they help others, but how they like desperate, this, this specific therapist desperately needs attention and like a therapist themselves. I don't know if that makes sense, but like. That makes sense to me. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> they're like helping people but they they're the ones that actually need help yeah and it's like you never you never see anyone else you only see them and it's like mainly one shotters which is i love one shotters those are very interesting mm, i got you i had some movie ideas but i forgot <laughs> <laughs> you know when i am asked a question of like any ideas and stuff that i have i like forget everything that i've yeah that's ever relatable. wanted to create <laughs> that's relatable that's yeah I mean, I have this one. I've said this in a previous podcast, but I have this one idea for a movie where it's like 1969. The United States government uh, hires acclaimed movie director Stanley Kubrick to fake the moon landing. So oh. Stanley Kubrick, wanting to like make the make it as realistic as possible, flies mm -hmm. to the moon to film on location. That's like, great. I think that'd be a funny. I a think funny that would be idea. like yeah, that would be really funny. Because that's like a conspiracy theory that yeah. Stanley Kubrick like filmed it or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I think it'd be hilarious if it's like, oh, he's on the moon filming on the <laughs> <laughs> I think that'd be great. I also had this one. <coughs> excuse me. I also had this one other movie idea, but it's like super dark. It's like, um, uh, it's like this guy finds out he's going to die in like a month or something. Like he gets a test, a test back. Mm hmm and he figures out he's going to die, so him and his f best friend go to Japan and okay. just, like, party. That and sounds interesting. And then, like, and then like at the end, he dies of, like, a like a overdose of some sort. Oh, man. And then, like, yeah, and then, like, yeah, he, like, dies of an overdose, but his, like, best friend thinks he's, like, dying from his disease. Mm -hmm. But then at the end, you figure out that the doctor, like, switched up I the, was gonna like, say, test I think that would be a good... A good twist yeah. in the end that that's really good it'd be like yeah because i feel like it could be f fun it could be tragic it mm -hmm. can make you laugh it can make yeah. you cry at the end because it's like it's like the beginning of the movie would be like oh wow that's a shock and then like the middle they're just like partying in japan you know <laughs> that's great you yeah know what i'm saying like going to like all these historic sites and like you know clubbing and stuff and things like that mm -hmm. and then i had like an idea where he'd be like like on a summit or something you know, like they do cocaine. <laughs> and then like, and then like he's like overdosing like as the sun is coming up and it's like outside. Oh, and then yeah. like his friend is like clutching him. Oh my God, you that would be saying? so cool, yeah. Yeah, like I don't know, it could be a good movie. It's definitely a dark out there idea though. But okay. someone should make that because I'm probably not gonna make that. Mm, I might steal that idea. Yeah, might feel, write it. Feel, free to, <laughs> feel free to steal that idea. Um, But yeah, I mean, that's pretty much everything else I got. Is there any? you want to like talk about before we end the podcast 
I don't know. I don't think so. I think I think we covered everything. All right, <laughs> sweet. All right, so that's the Kyle Lamb. I'll leave her Instagram and YouTube and things like that in the in the description. So make sure you give her a follow and check her stuff out, and make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video with a friend. And y'all have a blessed day. Peace. Bye, guys.